Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our webinar, What's New with Tridian Sites 9.6. With me, I have Arno and Greg from RWS. Arno is Senior Product Manager and Greg is Principal Solutions Consultant. Joining us today to take you through what's coming up with Tridian Sites 9.6. Um, just a few home uh, housekeeping tips. Uh, you, you can ask questions during the session. There is, a, a, there is an option in the panel for you to ask or raise your hands, and one of the organizers will pick it up and get them answered. Alternatively, towards the end, we have left some time for a Q&A session as well. I hope you enjoy, and over to you, Greg and Arno. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, let's get started. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Arno van Eymantov. I'm the product manager for Trade Insights. I'm based out of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, happy to have you all here for today's webinar about the new uh, Trade Insights 9.6 release. Um, and I'm actually fortunate to have Greg join me for this session as well. So, Greg, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Greg Gutman. I'm a Principal Solutions Consultant uh, based out of San Francisco. I'll be doing uh, just a very quick high-level demonstration today, uh, but I highly encourage you guys to uh, reach out to us to do a sort of more comprehensive demonstration of the features of 9.6. All right, great. So uh, now before we look at the details of the most recent release, um, I'd like to remind everyone that this, this is actually a memorable year for Tree Insights. Um, back in 1996, the first version of Tree was built uh, for a Dutch newspaper uh, publisher uh, called uh, Volkskrant. Uh, and as one of the world's leading content management platforms, Tree is trusted by some of the globe's uh, largest brands to manage their highly complex content needs. So as we celebrate uh, 25 years of Tree together with all of you, uh, we're actually very excited for the future to ensure that Trillion remains the top choice for global enterprises like yourselves. Uh, so hope you uh, will take a, a quick look at the RWS website as well. And there's a, there's a nice video of, um, of the founder, Arjen van Roy, in there uh, that you can have a look at, uh, as well as some uh, customer and partner testimonials. So I uh, highly encourage you to take a look there and celebrate this, uh, this memorable event with us. All right, so let's dive into the details of this uh, most recent product version we're about to release. Um, at this moment, we're going through the final stages of testing, so I expect that we'll be able to make uh, this release generally available uh, in about a couple of weeks. Uh, but keep an eye out on the community for the official announcement that I'll be posting over there. So this is an overview of all the themes that we've defined, and I wanted to take you through them uh, one by one. And at the end, Greg will uh, demo some of the key features, like he said, from this release. So the first theme um, that is driving customer success uh, with AI for content. So, um, we're talking about making it um, easier and better for end consumers to actually meet their goals uh, when they're uh, consuming your content, right? And they're currently mostly struggling to actually uh, to do that because content is usually, usually stored and delivered as disconnected chunks. Uh, it's an example, for instance, there's some related uh, piece of content. So there's two pages, one of them is uh, about the, the rules and regulations for bringing infants and children on, on an airline. Um, and the other page is about uh, the family couch that is available as an option that, uh, that you could buy uh, on this airline. Uh, but these, these bits and pieces of information, they're related to each other, but they haven't been actually uh, made explicitly available to the person that was searching for this information. Um, so, the problem with linking all of this manually is, is that it's expensive. Uh, it's going to be inaccurate and it's very limited because, well, it doesn't really scale that really well. Uh, and just using pure machine learning alone is also not very effective. Um, so the most uh, future-facing and controllable cost-effective way to map 
this content uh, together. Uh, semantically is basically uh, by the means of knowledge graphs. So what is a knowledge graph? Um, well, a knowledge graph is basically uh, a model of the world, a representation of the world as we know that, uh, or as we see it, uh, which is also something that a computer or a piece of program can, can interpret and, and make decisions on. Um, so um, it's, it's basically a way to map uh, our, our interpretation and our view of uh, how things are related to each other um, uh, to a model that, uh, that can be processed. Um, I think what's, what's really interesting actually is that analysts are acknowledging that um, the use of semantic, um, yeah, the semantic approach basically and knowledge graphs in, in general um, are, are important in this, in this world. Um, so in this case, Gartner actually uh, predicted that by 2024, uh, companies will be using knowledge graphs and semantically approaches uh, for natural language technology projects. Um, and, and those who do will have 75% less artificial intelligence technical debt uh, than those who don't. So I think this is, this is uh, just underwriting the statement of future-proofing uh, the content that, uh, that we're aiming for. Um, the, yeah, so the, the, the most important thing that I wanted to say about that is that by doing that is that uh, we've uh, formed a strategic partnership with Semantic Web Company um, and, and their uh, tool pool party is actually um, allowing us to, to drive a large portion of uh, the trading sites, but also the trading dogs, uh, Semantic AI um, offering. So I'll, I'll explain a little bit about what that exactly is about uh, and, and Greg will uh, demo also a little bit about uh, what it looks like um, but I just wanted to call this out that uh, yeah that that we're uh, working with uh, these guys and, and we very very much value their uh, partnership on the uh, uh, yeah on the on the um, yeah the meet basically to to drive our semantic AI uh, offering here all right, so what are then those things that we're actually aiming to do? Uh, so the main goals um, for content consumers, authors and managers, um, we've listed here in this, in this picture, right? So there's findability and connected end user journey, uh, the way of measuring outcomes, compliance and accuracy, accuracy uh, future proving your content um, and author and editor productivity. Um, and for the, for the, uh, uh, yeah, the near-term future and, and for this release in particular, uh, we're actually focusing on those three here. The findability of content, uh, the authoring and editor productivity, and future-proofing content and data. Uh, and now I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about um, what that is exactly that we're doing. Uh, because on the uh, findability of content, um, we're we're introducing semantic search capabilities. Um, so that means that um, with the end user in mind, um, there are ways to, uh, to, to search for content, obviously. Uh, we, will, we will actually be able to surf up that content. Uh, but the interesting bit is that while the user is actually looking for something, we can provide uh, search suggestions. So that means that um, we, we match basically the intent of the user uh, with the concepts that we know about that the content uh, has been uh, tagged with in this case, for instance, uh, or the co concepts that we know about that are available in the, the taxonomy in this case. Um, in addition, there's, there's capabilities of um, the facet search. Uh, so basically narrowing down search results based on uh, the properties of what that content is about. Um, and um, then further on, on the author and editor productivity, um, the, the most important feature that we're going to showcase here is also uh, the, the way of smart tagging. So I'll, I'll advance to the next slide and this is basically showing these, these things in detail, right? So the Semantic AI offering for Trillion uh, consists of smart tagging, which is tag suggestions. While you um, create your content, you can actually send it for analysis and it will be 
um, it will be there will be a, a match against the taxonomy and the concepts that uh, you've set up. So the, the, the knowledge graph basically that is that is driving that behind it. Um, and and based on the uh, results, uh, we will be able to provide you uh, suggestions to tag the content with. In this case, you will you will get uh, a list um, of tags uh, added to your to your uh, fields here, and you will be able to fully uh, adapt and change uh, manually when needed as well. Right? This is not something that uh, is a black box approach. Uh, we will suggest these tags. You will still have full control over what will happen uh, on, in terms of how you manage uh, manage those concepts that are associated with your content. Um, then basically to uh, to manage those those uh, taxonomies, we are introducing taxonomy space, which is uh, uh, basically the taxonomy management system behind this, right? So uh, in here you will be able to create a hierarchy of your concepts, uh, provide the uh, the relationships between them. So how are these these concepts related uh, here and there? Do we have narrower or broader? Uh, um, Concepts that uh, that uh, are yeah that 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 define the relationship, uh, or do you just have related concepts because they're they're similar in terms of uh, uh, the domain model there? Um, additional things that you manage here are uh, things like uh, the labels and 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 other um, yeah important uh, uh, important settings basically to to manage the the taxonomy itself. And all of that is then, um, in the end, uh, the goal to to uh, provide the semantic search capabilities that we just talked about, right? So in this particular um, example, you will see that car and uh, auto are uh, simil similar similar uh, words for the same thing. Um, vehicle, uh, same thing there. So so all of these things are related. So we we kind of know uh, what we're talking about, and, and we provide suggestions to uh, find these, uh, to, to use these search suggestions basically to, uh, to find the content that you're looking for. All right, um, well, how do we then package all of this? Um, so the Semantic AI product offering for Tridian basically is um, a software as a service add-on package uh, that we offer that works with both the on-premise and uh, the cloud versions of, uh, uh, well, Tridium Sites 9.6, uh, but also Tridium Docs uh, 14 SP4. Um, and it will include all of the current features. So the smart tagging, the semantic search and taxonomy space. Um, and we will make sure to include a couple of days of professional services to basically get you set up uh, properly. Um, and that is all fully supported through RWS. Um, so that is, um, that is it about the, um, the semantic AI, uh, in theory, um, a bit later, Greg will actually show you uh, what it is, uh, yeah, what, what it looks like and, and, and uh, what you can do with it uh, in real life. All right, so the next theme is making authors and editors more productive. And this is mostly... Um, geared towards uh, user productivity and usability improvements. Um, so based on customer feedback, we've added many of those improvements. And for example, we've done a quick create interactions for folder and structure groups. Um, there's a thumping of view item selector, which also supports uh, external content library items in there uh, and the ability for editors to open items in the tab. Um, and, and all of this is in, in, in experience space, in, which is our uh, latest uh, user interface update that we've introduced in Tridium Sites 95, and we'll keep on adding new and improved functionality on top of that uh, as we go, uh, you know, starting with this new 96 series. Um, so we're also committed to bringing uh, more of the functionality you're relying on uh, today, maybe in the classic UI to experience space. Uh, for example, uh, view and site to quickly preview a page uh, or a component on its stating or live site. Um, and there's multi-select support in item select dialogues and, and, and more of those uh, improvements. 
Accessibility of applications is also a hot topic these days, and we do see more customers, uh, yeah, basically interested in accessibility uh, in relation to Trigin, uh, both on the published content uh, as well as the editorial user interface. Um, and th therefore, we're continuously working to improve the access, improve the accessibility of uh, experience space. Um, and there's now a voluntarily, voluntary product accessibility template or BPAD report uh, available to indicate the level of our compliance with the accessibility guidelines. Um, and, and this is ex extremely important to some of our customers in the regulated industries, for instance, uh, where Section 508 is applicable, but also other customers uh, are very interested because of the WCAG uh, guidelines in general. Well, since taxonomies are important uh, for our semantic AI capabilities in the series, uh, we've also made sure to get keyword and category editor support in 962. Um, and next to that, we've also added the editorial search functionality uh, and bundle support and experience space, uh, which includes starting a workflow uh, from a bundle. And last but not least, we've added support for uh, translation workflows in uh, experience space in 9.6. All right, so the third theme is in the list is uh, expanding connector, uh, the connector ecosystem, uh, which is an ongoing process uh, of our connector ecosystem to, to um, yeah, to basically uh, include more and more connectors to third party technology tools uh, like the, the DAMs, the CRM, and MRM products, uh, and others. Um, I mean, by 2021, there are now over 8,000 solutions in the marketing technology landscape, and Trading Insights has always promoted the best of breed strategy uh, in which we believe our customers should use the best possible tool for their needs. Uh, and be able to seamlessly integrate that with our product. Uh, so to te technically solve that challenge, we've introduced the Trillion Integration Framework in Trillion Sites 9.1, uh, which basically allows you to easily deploy and use uh, a connector uh, for both the content manager and content delivery platforms of the product. Um, we're delivering connectors and integrations through uh, basically the uh, innovative solutions and partnerships that we've uh, made. Um, but you can also build your own connector. So for an overview of the connectors that we've added in over the last 12 months um, for marketing resource management, we're uh, working on the, uh, the Primo MRN connector that's expected by the end of this year. Um, on digital quality management, um, we have site improve, uh, which basically allows you to measure and improve uh, search engine optimization, accessibility, and, and content performance. Um, and for marketing automation, uh, there's a Marketo connector coming up and a Salesforce marketing cloud uh, connector uh, expected all by the end of year 2021. Um, there's a Brightcove connector for online video platform support. And on the language technology integrations, we have RWS Language Cloud and Language Weaver connectors available today. So the next theme is keeping track of entitlements. And for this, we have uh, listened to customers' needs for more flexible license models. Um, and yeah, we looked at modernizing our licensing and entitlement technology to start moving towards uh, yeah, meeting those needs. So, the initial benefit from this capability is the improved provision experience for you as a customer, uh, because it will remove the need for manual deployment of licenses. So you don't need to copy files to multiple machines manually anymore and request new licenses when you are renewing your virtual server part, for instance. Uh, since all the unused licenses will be released automatically now uh, to enable reuse somewhere else. And this greatly improves the flexibility in deployment, as it also will support deployment setups with containerization. So for ultimate flexibility, we're looking for ways to enable customers to scale up and down uh, based on demand. Um, for instance, when you expect uh, or experience peak load during a seasonal campaign or a product launch, 
and you need additional processing capacity. So, uh, for example, uh, yeah, such a license model could be a pay as you go uh, or a pay as you consume model uh, where you don't need to buy all the licenses for peak load upfront anymore, but you only pay for what you use at this time. So, this is what we're moving towards to, uh, but, but with the new uh, way of doing this, uh, where we're basically going to enable all of this uh, in the future. All right, and the last theme is updating key architecture. Uh, this includes various architectural changes to either address business needs or keep up with latest platform changes. Um, and the first thing I wanted to address is um, the pure content publishing capabilities. Um, so you can now publish your content fragments individually as, for instance, as if they were dynamic components so that you can consume them directly from the public GraphQL API. Um, and that means that you can now uh, publish folders and its contents directly. With that new capability, that new publishing capability, um, well, you can now mark folders as non-publishable, just like uh, structured groups. Um, and this provides more granular control over large item sets to be published uh, and basically prevents content that is marked as archive to be accidentally published. So especially important for those customers with legal requirements around content retention uh, so that they don't accidentally publish expired content. So build uh, headless digital experiences with our new semantic content models um, capabilities that was introduced in uh, Trading Sites 9.5. Um, we've, we've had that capability already there, but that was a manual configuration option. And um, right now what uh, we've done is we've improved that so that you dynamically expose those GraphQL types based on the published CM schema. So you basically uh, start publishing uh, new content uh, using a certain schema uh, or you update your schema and you start publishing any of that content that's using it. Uh, and that uh, new model, that strongly typed model that you can consume then is made available in the API. Um, that allows uh, yeah, the, the, the true spirit of uh, GraphQL basically to, to start uh, using code generation um, and, and yeah, consume the content in the way that it was, uh, that it was intended. So it's, it's decoupled from any of the, um, the the concepts of the content management system it's truly uh, showing basically the, the the type of content that you're consuming so if you're talking about uh, consuming an article um, you will see that we're talking about an article and it's not a uh, a page with a component presentation on it and and you need to understand what the different component presentations are um, all the items, all the content is typed. So um, all of your um, applications that are using uh, the code generation, for instance, they will um, they will be able to just query for articles. And you don't need to worry about uh, any certain specific knowledge, uh, domain knowledge, for instance. Um, you can you can truly build um, your Atlas digital experiences uh, as you want. We've also introduced um, initial public release of the core surface REST open API. Um, this has been a long-standing request in our community IDs, um, and, and it marks the first step towards standardization on that .NET standard and .NET core. Um, will also enable us to, uh, to, to make it easier to containerize content manager services in the future. Um, and, and possibly run them on non-Windows environments at some point as well. Um, you can build your content manage management facing applications or extensions with the new app, Open API, uh, but note that we will keep adding functionality in future releases to get to future feature parity uh, with the classic core service. And 
you can now also enjoy single sign-on experiences across uh, various three insights applications uh, with the improved single sign-on um, capabilities. So support for multi-factor authorization and uh, and or two-factor authorization uh, is also available. Uh, that the identity provider uh, that you're using supports it, obviously. Uh, but uh, standard authentication protocols such as OpenID Connect and SAML 2.0 are supported for this. Uh, and in addition to the web user interfaces and the core service REST Open API that currently uh, supported the single sign-on features already, um, the, on this uh, slide listed applications, uh, client applications actually also have support for single sign-on now as well. So content porter, template builder, feature workflow designer, and the classic uh, WCF core service. All right, I think it's time for our demo. Greg, do you want to <laughs> take control? Yeah, let me uh, make myself a uh, presenter. Okay, show my screen. So I assume you guys can can see my screen right now. Um, so what I wanted to do is actually I want to kick things off by showing um, one of my customers that just went live about a week ago. And this is Starlux Airlines. Uh, they've, they're an airline that's based out of Taiwan. And what they've done is they've actually used Tridian in a headless approach. Now they've done this with Tridian Sites 9.5. They did this work in conjunction with our professional services team. And what they wanted to do is they really wanted to use Tridian in sort of a very lightweight way. They wanted the site to be super performant. And if you want to like go and, you know, maybe get some inspiration for, you know, maybe what your next digital experience will look like, take a look at what they've done with the website. And it's all um, based off of, uh, Nuxt and Vue.js is the front end JavaScript framework that they use. And I highly encourage you to look at, look at it and also realize that these types of very lightweight applications are something that it's, it's going to be much easier to, to do with a 9.6 release. So for example, you know, in less than five minutes, I was able to create a schema and then immediately Get that um, get that content available as JSON via via GraphQL and the ability to just to do these quick schemas and just publish that content out as JSON is something that I think a lot of web development teams love um, because it means that you know the web development teams they don't have to have some sort of deep knowledge about Tridian all they need to do is work with the technologies that they're familiar with. Uh, and then uh, use the use the content in their framework of choice. Uh, and I think that brings us to the first poll that we wanted to do, which was, and let's see, Arno, do you have the polling uh, view? Let's see if we yeah, can. Um, let me start that for you. Okay. So this the first question that we have for all the participants is in the next year, um, which of the following JavaScript frameworks are you thinking about deploying? Uh, and if you guys want to just um, like click on any of those, if you're not going to do anything with any of these frameworks, then then don't don't answer. But we we want to see what the some of the trends are because we're seeing a lot of people looking at React. Um, there's going to be some other other sort of more traditional companies uh, are using are looking to to Angular. Of uh, in our Asian customers, a lot of them seem to be using Vue.js and interested in Vue.js. So I'm just really curious about uh, what kind of JavaScript frameworks people are thinking about for the next year. Okay, so while you guys fill out that poll, let's go back and let's um, start with. So this is the this is the 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 sort of semantic content models and. Uh, what the next part of what I want to focus on is the semantic AI piece. So this is where we talk about the different conceptual models for content, uh, how to organize content, and what some of the impacts will be. So one of the key things that 
we that you can focus on with semantic AI uh, is search. And we'll, so this is just a very practical problem area. And we'll get into some of the more theoretical problem areas in a little bit. But so, for example, if people come to your website and they might they might be typing in things like a car. Now, a car is sort of uh, one way to express like automobile, vehicle, et cetera. And what's nice about the way that uh, our, our as a semantic AI model works is that in your semantic uh, model tree, you can have different areas inside that map um, that you can expose to the end users that represents a different type of problem area. So for here, you know, this is this context is about you know different types of insurance that we have related around the car versus this might be more of you know the 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 coverage type. So one is you know what are the different types of insurance uh, that I'm going to be interested in as I'm uh, considering a purchase versus another one which is more of like you know, what are my coverage? What's the, what's the, what's, what do I get after I've done the, the purchase? So these are, these are things that are, that are very interesting in terms of being able to expose different parts and different concepts around terms within your search. And we've got different partners that have actually started to specialize just in the, the improvement of your um, search capabilities. So that's one just very practical area. The next area is when you actually get into the search, depending on what context you've chosen, you'll be able to get different types of refinements that, that are available to you. So if you think about your taxonomy can be used to actually tie into the facets that you're gonna to expose to end users for, for searches. And this is just very powerful, it's just a very powerful way of allowing people to, to narrow down and find what they're looking for. And I've said it a thousand times, like it, to me, it's unbelievable that, you know, in 2021, search is it's still broken on a lot of websites. And I think that the more that you can use categorization and taxonomies to, to, to help your end users, not only will there be like greater satisfaction with you using the website, but there'll also be some very practical uh, implications, namely that people will be less likely to, to pick up the phone because they'll be able to find what they need on the website. So that call diversion is something that uh, a lot of our customers are starting to appreciate. Okay, so this is the view from the end user side of, side of things. Now, what we wanted to do is we wanted to make things as easy as possible for the, the content authors to incorporate some of this categorization. And for the content authors, it's, it's so easy. All you need to do if you're on uh, let's say a component over here. So here is some of my um, content. It's an article. All I need to do is press the suggest tags. And then it will go through and it will say, it'll, I'll get a notification that one or more fields with the, su the suggestions to classify this topic uh, have been provided. So I can now go into the metadata. So here's the, the tag that has been suggested. And then I can go and I can see, okay, here are where the suggested, the additional suggestions uh, have been made as to how you should tag this content. And the idea is that we want to make things as easy as possible for the content authors, because um, it's, it's, when people are creating their content, it might be difficult to remember, oh, how do I classify this content? Where does it go, et cetera. Uh, we made it easy so that the content authors can just incorporate, you know, the the new suggestions into their um, into the into the into the component. Now, this all sort of begs the the question. It sort of brings to mind the the evolution of Tritium from like a website builder into a content hub. Because as, as Arno mentioned, you, you, we're moving away from a model where people are going to have to explicitly make those, uh, or where content authors have to explicitly make these connections between here's a web page and here's the content. Instead, these pieces of content are just going to be 
floating out in in the in the content hub they're going to be categorized and then they're going to be repurposed in 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 multiple ways um, based off of some of the some of the context so arno showed the example of uh, a, a an airline seat a special type of airline seat that was made available um, to uh, to passengers traveling with families now if somebody is researching something or looking up information about you know traveling with kids etc you would want those seats to to pop up automatically so now instead of a content author uh, explicitly saying hey on this page have a link to this particular product for families if the overall context is searching for stuff about families you're going to have that that uh, special seat uh, come up so so and and I think this is getting more uh, important you know as we're moving away from um, you know, the model of uh, of just consuming content by websites and we're moving into the world of information that's going to be put onto digital screens that or 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 voice assistants or in car entertainment systems like this the whole new world of consuming content is is moving is is changing and of course there'll still be the websites but there's going to just be a whole lot of different ways to to consume the the content in the in the future anyway it's a big topic i've just been scratching the the surface on it i wanted to also go and just show a little bit uh, of the new ui and some of the additional features that we put into it uh, so let me just leave this page i'm going to go into uh the graphene user experience so some of the some of the items that you guys will be able to see as we you know, have this nice new rebranded um website all of this should be fairly familiar to people who are already on 9.5 but i wanted to also show that there are some things that are um incredibly useful so for example if we go into some of the 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 product items you'll be able to see very easily you know what are some of the translations that are that are out of date uh, you'll be able to go ahead and and start translations just directly from this um, from this UI uh, if we go into some of the items that have been um, that have been uh, published, You will also be able to quickly go and navigate and see uh, where some of these structural elements have been published onto the onto the the page. You can easily go and you can view that content on the uh, on the website. Uh, you can also get information very quickly about where it's published, and you'll see that there's a lot of additional features that have been put onto um the the new graphing user interface and i think it's something that you'll you'll find i think before you know maybe it was about 80 percent of the 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 content authoring tasks could be done by the new user interface i think with this release with the 96 release we bumped that up to about 95 percent so if you could do 95 percent of your work over here on this new release um, I think it's uh, I think it's very very nice. And then that five percent, you'll have to go back into the old uh, classic UI to do. And I think there was a question from uh, from Sarkis about uh, you know will 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 extensions be supported uh, in this in this new UI? So in the 9.6 release, not yet. So that is going to be coming up in a future release where we'll have a framework for you to extend this UI and you know put additional um, buttons on here which are specific towards your particular use case but for for right now um, if you do have extensions on the ui you're going to have to go back to uh, the classic ui interface to to use those those extensions um, but you know there's there's great improvements that have been made and that's going to be coming up in um in a in a future release and you'll also be able to see that there are some additional um sort of nice features so for example on some of these these lists uh you can now specify to export the what you see 
into a, uh, a spreadsheet. So that can, that can these are just some utilities that we're starting to plug into the user interface just to make, um, just to make it nicer for, for the content authors on an ongoing basis. Um, so with that said, I think I'll, uh, why don't we ask our, our second poll and let's see if we can get that poll up here. Um, oh, interesting. So, uh, so I just saw the, the poll results for our first one was a lot of people are doing react, uh, very closely matched by angular. Interesting. And very few people doing uh, Vue.js. Well, that's uh, that that's that's great information. So let's do the next poll, um, which is like, which would, would you like to get a um, a nine uh, a nine six uh, demo? So one of the thing that we want to start to do with some of these interactions that we have in these webinars is to sort of you know have like the path for the next thing that's that's coming up. So I'll be happy to do. I, uh, or one of my colleagues would be happy to do a, a, a custom demonstration for you. We'll of course do, you know, a discovery call, figure out where you guys are, are at and what you're looking to do. And then we could do a much more in-depth demonstration of the, um, of the 9.6 release and answer any questions that you, that, that you might have. So if any of you are interested in getting an individualized uh, demonstration, please select one of the, one of the buttons and we'll be happy to reach out. And we're, we're doing this as a really consultative approach because I think the most value that we get um, out of uh, some of our releases is figuring out, you know, what are the features of this release? What are the technical features? And how do they align with some of your business initiatives? And if the more that we can make those things match, I think the more successful you'll be with the product. So we're very open and we're very happy to, to continue the dialogue. Okay, well, we got uh, seventy percent saying yes. That's that's great, and so we'll be happy to to um, to to um, uh, to follow up on that. So now I'm going to uh, close this poll, and I'm going to hand it back to Arno. Uh, unless there's any, I haven't been monitoring the questions. Are there any other questions that we have on here? Uh, so where is the taxonomy itself managed? inside or outside of trading? Can these tags be translated in local languages? So that's an awesome question. So the, 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 the first part of it is that we didn't like build out uh, our internal like uh, taxonomy AI thing ourselves. You know, There's a lot of products that are out there which, which have really solved the problem. So to get them the most value, what we did is we integrated with something called, uh, with a product called Pool Party. And um, the Pool Party is, we're, we're calling it the taxonomy space. So that's the one that you should be, um, so that's, that's where you'll be setting up the taxonomy. That's where you'll have the concept maps. So it's in the third party, but we are the ones, we'll, we'll help you like acquire that technology. Um, Arno will be able to go through some of the commercials around all of that. Uh, and if you're interested in that taxonomy, uh, we also have some handouts uh, that are available, uh, which explain like the semantic AI, uh, which explains our semantic AI approach. And some of those handouts are things that you guys can can download, and then you could also start to share internally if you want to start to socialize the the idea of an upgrade. Okay, so um, Arno, I think let's hand it back to you. Yeah, definitely. And let's change the presenter and. Arno. There we go. All right. Yes, thanks. So let me start sharing again. Mm -hmm. Can you see the screen again, uh, Greg? Yep. See your screen. All right. You're all set. Great. All right. So, um, I also wanted to give you an update on what's new in Trillion's cloud offering. Um, and to before I do that, um, let's let's quickly summarize or provide an overview of what we do provide in the cloud. Um, right. So um, we have a flexible offering um, for customers who want to move to our cloud. Uh, content as a service basically means that we have management of uh, the content manager and the content delivery 
um, uh, up until the APIs, uh, but there's also hybrid options that we can provide there. And, and obviously there's uh, the possibility to scale as needed. And we have uh, some of our larger customers currently in our cloud, which is, uh, which is awesome, of course. Um, but yeah, that can only be done when we are uh, able to provide a good um, uh, service to, uh, to you, of course. And, and that comes with uh, security and, and compliance as well, right? So we do have our certifications on SOC 2 uh, and the ISO certification um, that are relevant, uh, that, that, that are uh, available there. Um, and of course, the encryption, firewalls, anti anti antivirus, uh, uh, high availability and backup uh, strategies and dis disaster recovery uh, is all covered to ensure that we uh, can live up to our service levels and, and uptime uh, and then providing that at a predictable, pre predictable cost. Um, in addition, um, uh, we do have the option also to uh, deliver um, endpoints, so content delivery endpoints in uh, within the Chinese firewall, and I'll touch about on that um, in the next slide. Uh, so our accelerator for China is basically a solution that helps you set that all up, right? So we can help you navigate those uh, requirements uh, that uh, that you need to meet in the uh, in the Chinese region, and and yeah, help you understand the whole process and and set uh, set set these things up and, and uh, apply for uh, licenses and, and the, the whole filing process that, uh, that is needed to do that. Um, but in the end, uh, it's about making sure that we also can provide a, um, uh, yeah, an endpoint that meets the, the needs for those Chinese end uh, consumers, of course, right? So that's done by launching a dedicated Chinese delivery endpoint that can just connect to your existing screen sites environment, uh, be it uh, either in uh, our cloud or be it, uh, uh, you know, uh, for, for on-premise customers. So on-premise on customers can also connect to Chinese um, uh, endpoints that we, that we provide with this DXA for China uh, offering, um, which is, seamless in the way that you work as you always do. Um, you basically author your, in your existing Trudy Insights in, environment and you uh, basically publish to a new uh, endpoint in, uh, within the Chinese firewall. Um, and this is, this is how that would look like. Uh, so we partnered up with Alibaba Cloud to be able to do that. Um, and we do have some customers using this already uh, uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to satisfaction. Um, and what's the new thing actually that we're um, about to release as well, um, uh, similar in in the similar time frame time frame as uh, as with uh, with the upcoming uh, release itself, we're we're providing a new offering in the cloud for uh, public GraphQL API gateway, uh, which which is. Um, basically something where we see an increased need for directly making the public GraphQL API available uh, for uh, the customer's applications to consume content directly from it. Uh, and this is especially uh, interesting for headless content management use cases. Um, so we're using techniques such as rate limiting, query depth limiting uh, to keep up with the SLAs that we, uh, that we uh, provide. Uh, an authentication will happen through the use of carrier tokens and, and further protection against abuse uh, will be done uh, to, uh, through a, a web application file. Um, so this capability is not directly coupled to a specific trading sites cloud release. Uh, it is only available for trading sites cloud, um, but it will be made available in the next months. And before I move on, um, I do wanted to have a look at our last poll, um, which is about whether uh, there's interest um, or what are you thinking actually about moving to our uh, cloud in the next year. So I'll give you a little bit of time to um, answer the poll. And while we do that, um, Greg did point that out already. Uh, 
we do have some um, handouts for you available to download uh, that are attached to the webinar. One is also about the uh, Trading Cloud offering data sheet. Um, so you can basically read through again uh, what, what I just summarized here. Um, and obviously the, the other handouts are, are interesting to have a look at as well. So uh, the 10 reasons to upgrade, uh, there's the semantic AI data sheet that uh, correct you mentioned already earlier uh, and also the what's new on the trading sites 96 data sheet uh, itself we'll just give it a few more seconds for people to uh, to complete before we yeah. move on it looks like we're at about a, a quarter you know of, uh, of of participants are thinking about moving to rws cloud so that's good you know yeah I think, makes sense you know, yeah All right, I'll close the poll um, and we can move on to the rest of the topics. All right, let me see. Training and certification. So I uh, wanted to give you a small update on, um, on this. Um, the first thing that's on the list is our treatment science fundamentals, uh, e-learning. Um, uh, which is which is a 60 minute e-learning uh, that we created to provide the overview of trading sites, which is a free of charge e-learning uh, that you can uh, actually access at the RWS University. Uh, anyone can sign up, um, but you do have to enroll and, and uh, register at the university to be able to, to see it. Um, but perfectly, well, I think it's a great tool for anyone, basically, with, with new people in the team that need to learn about uh, trading itself and, and need to uh, maybe, or maybe you're already working with trading for a while and you want to get an update on um, some of the, the concepts and just see if, if, you, if you actually uh, know all of it already, right? Which is, uh, which is perfectly fine. Um, so do check out the uh, free early e-learning. Um, at the RWS uh, University. And next to that, we have two certification exams available on the RWS University as well, uh, with the first one being the Tree Insight Developer Certification and the second, the Tree Insight Solution Architect uh, Certification. So the current version that we're uh, certifying for is still Tree Insights 9.5. When we have launched 9.6, there will be an updated version uh, for 9.6 as well, so so be on the lookout for that. Um, I mean, the purpose to uh, for this certification program is basically validating your uh, tree insights knowledge and skills, uh, and, yeah, in all its aspects. Um, and if you're a partner and you want to become tree insights certified, uh, do reach out uh, to your RWS partner manager so you can get uh, free access to um, the certification exams. All right, great. And then we have something else to look forward to, uh, which is the Tree and Expert Summit. And that's an event we are organizing uh, online still this year uh, on December 8th and 9th. So this is the Tree and Expert Summit uh, EMEA. Uh, if you're not in EMEA, feel free to join anyways. Um, it is in, in EMEA time zones in the afternoon. So uh, I think for, the North American uh, customers and, and people interested in general, uh, you can join still. Uh, might be a little bit early when we start, but overall, you should be able to join. Um, yeah, do register now at uh, the site below, audibest.com slash TXS 2021. Um, yeah, I think that's it for the main uh, topics. Um, let's go and see if we have additional questions uh, that we can answer. And yeah, feel free to send your questions in the chat uh, or in the uh, in the tool, basically in the platform, and we'll uh, we'll start to have a look at it. Um, Rick, you you talked about extensibility already. Indeed, uh, 96. Uh, we still have extensibility in 
classic CME, but extensibility and experience space will be in a later version. It, it is something that we're uh, very, very eager to get into. So very likely to, to happen very soon. Um, the taxonomy management, you talked about that too. That's outside of Tridian. You can definitely access all of the concepts uh, as if they were native to tree, right? So it's like like an ECL item that you can browse into your uh, list of categories and keywords. Uh, they, they'll be shown as categories and keywords in there. Um, and the, the labels for those concepts uh, can be translated in the local languages. Yes, they are uh, also uh, translatable. Um, then there's a question, is there a way to switch from the classic UI to experience space. Um, you can share, you can switch from experience space to the classic UI because there's a quick link there. Um, yeah, that is that is okay. That was actually already also in the question. Um, yes, you can from experience space. We have a direct link to uh, classic UI. Um, we we didn't build it in the other way around. Um, because maybe not all of the customers uh, are able or willing to actually start using Extreme Space right away uh, for all of their users, um, uh, right? Because I, I think I mean, anything new we need to <laughs> we need to try out and test out and see how well it uh, how well it suits, which is perfectly fine. Uh, but that that means that if you don't install Extreme Space, uh, yeah, we have a link that's that's that link that we don't want to have there. Uh, you can obviously create uh, uh, basically a link from the classic UI in the, um, the hamburger menu, the sliding uh, sliding menu, um, by updating the configuration of the, uh, of the uh, manifest file there. Um, so it is possible to to add it, but it it's not there by default. I quickly have a look. Greg, do you see some that you want to answer? Uh, no, but there was a question around um, the training, and um, okay. and I haven't, uh, you know, I know that we've we we're launching that university.rws.com with some some courses on there. Are they free courses on university.rws.com, or are those pay for courses? We have paid for and free courses. The e-learning, the fundamentals e-learning that we just uh, talked about that one is uh, free so you can just go and register and enroll for free yeah so 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 Jim I think the the answer is like some of the those e-learning courses are, are free but if you want to have something exactly. that's more in depth where you've got like instructor-led training um, that's true. a paid course yeah 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 no exactly uh, that's that's true uh, and we're, we're definitely looking also to expand of course the um, the catalog of e-learnings um, and, and, and very likely also uh, keeping them for free. So the e-learnings uh, we're aiming to keep them uh, to keep them, uh, yeah, easily accessible and free. All right. I see a question about single sign-on for content porter. Um, are there plans for single sign-on for web? Uh, uh, or an alternative for bulk file uploads? Uh, great question. Yes. So, web dev as a protocol doesn't necessarily support um, interactive logins, which are basically the the thing that we need for single sign on. In this case, that we're that we're using. Um, so that's that's not a big uh, thing. But uh, in the next version, we're looking into uh, adding the bulk file uploads. Uh, capability, yes. Yeah, so that that is then removing the need, hopefully, for you to use web dev, uh, and therefore, uh, yeah, you don't necessarily need single sign-on for web dev itself. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's the the uh, solution uh, direction that we're looking into. Um, let me see. Um, 
how do installation take advantage of our scaling and awareness at the ECM2 level, mainly from license perspective? Right. Yeah, so I did mention um, in the theme, under the theme of entitlements, that um, containerization is something that we now allow you to do, right? So um, the solution we have now is that um, there's a specific entitlement uh, that you as a customer uh, would get based on what you've bought, right? So there's, in, in this case, I think we're talking mostly about the CPU cores. Um, the, the idea is that if you consume from that entitlement, so let's say you, you bought 10, right? Let's just keep it simple. Um, you bought 10 items and you're consuming 10 because you're, you're launching one uh, container. Uh, and so and so on, right? So you keep on launching containers until you consume everything. Um, then basically the next container that's spinning up will not be able to get an, a license because your, your entitlement is fully used, right? That's basically how that would work. Um, when you then um, decommission a container, um, the license will be released and another container can start consuming the license that just got released. So that's the way how we're um, allowing you to start um, yeah, making use of all the uh, scaling options in, uh, yeah, in, in, in cloud providers that you're talking about. In this case, AWS, you were asking about. Uh, so yeah, that's, um, that's a possibility. Um, I think there's a question uh, from Andrew. Uh, content porter, uh, whether that's operating system agnostic yet? Uh, no, unfortunately not. This is uh, this is still the same application. Uh, so uh, so you will need a Windows uh, machine to run it still. Yeah. Um, where can I find the full list of all new announcements in experience space? Um, great question. Uh, so there's there's different areas where we uh, list. Uh, uh, of course, uh, new enhancements. So um, in our release notes in the documentation, we will mention uh, a lot of IDs that you guys have submitted through uh, the RBS uh, community, right? So the community IDs that we have included uh, will all be listed in the release notes. Um, and there's also the, uh, the overview of the, um, uh, the data sheet um, that will that will show you what's all new. So uh, do have a look at the data sheet uh, where we list all of those new things. Let me see, Greg. Do you see something still uh, to be answered, or do you yeah, think I think that Prince Mar has a question around. Um, we often come across the needs for having conditional fields and components, fields that appear or disappear based on the selection of another field. So sort right. of a conditional presentation of fields and sort of making, I guess, I guess this is it's an interesting question, right? Because it's like you you want you don't want to overwhelm a content author with like a yeah. whole bunch of different options, but instead you want that form to sort of dynamically yeah. change yeah. based on what people yeah. are choosing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good question. And um, I, I just scrolled through the question. I saw another question that is kind of related to this, uh, which is about the, the grouping of uh, and, 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 you know, showing, so expanding or collapsing basically those groups of, of, of fields as well. So I think both of those are very interesting ideas that do uh, actually exist also already on three uh, sites, community ideas. Um, if you are um, very interested in those, yeah, please vote for them, right? If, if you, um, if we see that an ID gets more uh, traction in the community, so more community support, uh, yeah, the more likely it is that we'll consider implementing it. Um, so, uh, yeah, do gather support and, and we'll, uh, we'll try to prioritize those ideas. Um, for now, um, the answer is no, we don't have that. Um, we are, um, you know, as part of the, the uh, development of experience space, we're looking at uh, how we want to do content modeling in the future as well, right? So schema creation, for instance. Uh, 
and we want to greatly simplify that uh, and add new features. So uh, when we do, we will definitely take into account SL, sorry, the RWS community IDs that are, uh, yeah, that are related to that. And then I think we've got another question about, uh, can we use Content Porter to migrate content from 8.5 to 9.5, especially content structures are different in terms of publication heavy in 8.5 versus tenant heavy in 9.5? Yeah, I don't think I got the full gist of the question, but in, in uh general uh, yes you can use content porter to migrate content across um this is this is the whole point of, of having content porter as well so that you can move content across dtap um you know uh, environments as well as actually migrate it from uh, uh usually lower versions uh, to uh, to newer versions so yeah that this is this is definitely possible okay um, and then with the new enhancements in the content API, are we going to need Tritium developers anymore? Or going forward, just a web developers will be as effective even without core Tritium knowledge. Uh, it's very hard to find Tritium knowledge in the market. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I think I think there's always going to be some demand for Tritium developers, but I think it's it's more about like just being able to sort of widen the number of people who can who can touch Tridian and and work with Tridian content. And when I do presentations, I mean historically things have been very much focused around like IT type developers, etc. But there's this new sort of category of like marketing technologists, web designers, and, and who are now able to be able to use content very easily coming in from from Tridian. So I don't I don't see it as like a, a complete shift, but it's almost like we're we're widening the pool of people who are able to technically use and and get value out of out of Tridium. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, yeah, I, I see we've overrun our time yeah. slot actually. Uh, so <laughs> just want to uh, uh, make sure to thank you all uh, for joining. Um, make sure to download and read the data sheets that are attached to the webinar. So we, we've made those available for download. So uh, please, uh, please use those. Um, yeah, again, thank you all for joining today and have a good day. Yeah, thanks everyone. I put my email in the in the chat. Like if you guys want to follow up, uh, please go ahead and uh, feel free to reach out to me. We are, I also put in a link in the chat to the T, uh, Tridian Expert Summit and also the university. Uh, .sdl.com. So sign up for a course, sign up for Trading Expert Summit, shoot me an email, uh, any, anything you like. Um, we're, we're here to help you guys out. Uh, 9.6 is a really nice, nice, nice release. I've been pleasantly surprised on multiple times. So uh, yeah, Arno, congratulations on the great release. Yeah, thank you, Greg, but uh, you as well, and, and all of you for all of your input as well. All right, that's it. Have a great right. day. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys.